Americans love our cheeseburger and fries. But have you ever wondered how they get the sesame seeds to stick to the bun? Excellent. Any idea how many tomatoes are in a bottle of ketchup? Perfect. And how do they get the dill and pickles anyway? Whoa, who knew? I'm Bobby Bogner, and I've been eating my whole life. Unpleasant. And you're not going to believe the amazing world behind every bite you take. This is one big slice of cheese here. Now, cheeseburger and fries on Food Tech. I'm here for an American classic, cheeseburger and fries. Last year, Americans ordered over 7 billion cheeseburgers and 8.5 billion orders of fries. That's 23 cheeseburgers for every man, woman, and child in America. Now, it might only take you a few minutes to eat one of these. Me, if I'm hungry, a minute tops. But what's amazing is what goes into making these things. Did you ever wonder why the cheese melts so perfectly? That's not luck, it's science. And how about a factory that can put out over 36 million fries a day? Well, you're about to see what really goes into making a cheeseburger and fries. And it all starts with a trip to beef country. I've worked in nearly every aspect of the restaurant industry, but I gotta tell you, this is the first time that I've been penned up with something I might eat. So I'm out here in the middle of Illinois and we're at a big feedlot here. Roger runs the feedlot, surrounded by about 700 head of cattle. Now it's not just a bunch of cows because that's a female that's already had a calf. These are steers and heifers or the males and the females. So which ones of those are best for hamburger meat? They're all good for hamburger. Before the cattle were brought here, they were raised only on grass in the fields. But they're here for one reason and one reason only, and that's to fatten them up. This feed truck right here is giving each cow here over 40 pounds of feed a day. In the mid-1900s, beef cattle maxed out at about 800 pounds. Today, cattle that are fed exclusively grass end up at about 1,000 pounds. But in mainstream production, cattle like these receive a kind of super chow designed for rapid weight gain. And if you look at it, you can see what's in it. We've got corn, we've got distiller's grains, we've got grated hay, we've got all the stuff that's gonna get them nice and fat. They need to gain almost three or four pounds every day that they're here. For even more weight gain, farmers also administer hormones, which they tell me will be virtually undetectable when the beef hits the market. On average, the hormones help bring an additional 7% weight gain. So the cows come in between 600 pounds and 800 pounds, and then they leave here over 1,200 pounds, ready to go uh, to be, what's the right word? Harvested. Harvested for our hamburgers. That's beef industry talk for slaughter. American slaughterhouses harvest more cattle than any in the world, nearly 37 and a half million a year, about 70 a minute and all of them have to be butchered. So I've come to Eichmann's Processing in Seward, Illinois to see how they make hamburger patties. And I'm happy to say that it's done under the scrutiny of the United States Department of Agriculture. I mean, this place is immaculate. That's because of author Upton Sinclair's 1906 book, The Jungle, which exposed the horrific conditions of American processing facilities, prompting the government and the industry to clean them up. So let the butchering begin. So we've split them, and now we're in the cooler where I get my handy-dandy hairnet. So we've got them hanging upside down here. You can see that the head would be down in this area right here. But up top, this is where you get your stew meats, and your meats need to be slow cooked, the tougher cuts. And as we come down in here, we've got the leaner cuts that don't get as much muscle use, like your tenderloin, your ribeyes. And then this area right here is what we're focusing on today, because we need to get some burger meat. And this is the chuck. Traditionally, chuck has been the primary cut used for burgers, but today, trimmings from other cuts are used as well. Either way, fat brings it all together. It may clog your arteries, but fat is what makes a hamburger taste good. All right, so we're gonna split it right here. Oh, you're handing this to me like I'm gonna saw this. All right, lean up. Good sharp saw. A cut here. Am I breaking any speed records, Chad? Another cut there. And before you know it, our chuck is ready for the grinder. This is a big daddy grinder here. And anything we put in this thing is gonna get ground up, so we gotta be real careful. 
You can see how you got all the fat and all the meat. It's still kind of separate. We're gonna run it through and grind it again so we can get the fat dispersed throughout the whole burger patty because that's where you get the great flavor. But all that's left is forming it into patties. And once that's done, we've found the beef for our burger. Now we need something to put it in. So I headed west to see how buns are made. I'm here in Ontario, California at the Fresh Start Bakery. It's 185,000 square feet of fresh baked goodness. These guys make more hamburger buns than you can imagine. Over a million and a half a day. Half a billion a year. To get the whole story, we've got to go back to the beginning. And that means getting here first thing in the morning when the tanker trucks with the flour come in. Every day, we got how many trucks? We got three to four truckloads coming a day, close to 200,000 pounds of flour. Come on up, Bob. Ugh. All right, let's see what's inside. Right now, this is flour. Tomorrow, it's gonna be a hamburger bun. You got that right. All right, so how many buns is that gonna make? 50,000 dozen. 50,000 dozen? How long from the time that it comes out of this truck till the time it's in a restaurant? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, fresh bread for you. A closed pipe system transfers the flour inside where it blends with yeast, oil, and water before it enters a fermentation tank. Open that up, take a whiff of that. All right. Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty strong stuff. Wow, it smells like a brewery. Like, uh, you really smell the fermentation. That's, that's what gives your bread that fermented taste. So if it smells like beer, you can use it? Yeah, it's ready to go. That's where I get I live my life by that. <laughs> Next, workers add ingredients like salt and calcium. Open that up there, Bobby. Nutrient bin, right? Hey, we're gonna dump salt in there. All right, you're gonna let me, let me toss this in there. You gotta uh, dump it right over in. my shoulder I'll there. it over okay. your shoulder. There you go. Well, that didn't, that wasn't so hard. Okay, now 11 more. That's 11 salt. more? 11 more salt. All right, salt, huh? Here's the diamond. Bob, we'll get somebody else to do the wrap. That's a okay. cake. Then, after a giant mixer kneads it all into dough. There you go. It enters the production line. This is where we're dividing all the dough pieces up. And it's cutting it perfectly off every time. And it's going through these rollers, coming out on the other side, a perfect circle, right. a perfect sphere. It's amazing. That's this is the coolest machine you've got, buddy, let me tell you. The machine then dusts the dough balls with flour, presses them into the shape of a hamburger patty, and drops them into nonstick pans. Wow, and look at this. The precision is so amazing. Every time they come out, they fall right into place. Now, we got this one right in here. Are you going to be able to fix that? Yeah, that one's going to be fixed by this pan shaker here. All right, let's see it what happens here. Dopey. See that? There you go. So automatically, everything ends up right in the center where it needs right. to be before it gets heated. Right. Really impressive. The dough patties pass into the 110 degree proofer. So let's look inside here. Where for the next hour, the yeast activates and the dough rises. Meanwhile, just around the bend, workers prepare to crown the patties with sesame seeds. Well, where do we get these from? Guatemala. And they're really good for you. These little seeds are so packed with minerals and vitamins that Roman soldiers ate them for strength and energy. What are we doing? Here we're sifting to make sure there ain't no stems or anything in it. I'm gonna taste it. Taste a little bit here. Yeah, it tastes really good and clean. But you really get the flavor of sesame seeds after they've been toasted, right? Right. right. Because you get the release of that sesame oil. Right. Which makes all the difference. Really sets apart a, a great bun from just a good one. Right. Ah, but first, we have to plant the seed. We're at a critical juncture here in the life of a hamburger bun, right? Yeah. It's about to be seeded. And I've always wondered what kept the sesame seeds on, if it was magic or glue or... It just uh, have anything to do with this water uh, spray we got right here? Yeah, you're exactly right. If you look over here, we put a thin fan spray of water mist on the bun. So the water and the flour come together as a little bit of a glue so these seeds can stick to it. Right. Now that the buns are seated, time to heat them up on the other side of this stainless steel wall. The big oven. The big boy, the big daddy oven here. This is that gas oven. Oh. Woo! <laughs> All right, we can close that up. Boy. And then that's, the that's buns... about a 410 degrees in there. How long? Nine minutes. Okay, so these buns are ready to go. Are we looking?